we actually back onto a very large deconsecrated cemetery. It's quite quiet around this area because everyone is dead. <laughs> Hi Vogue, I'm Erdem. Welcome to my home. Today we're going to talk about some of my objects of affection. We are in Bloomsbury. This is a very kind of old area in London. I'm married to an architect who designed this beautiful house. My first object is this painting that used to belong to Duffy Ayers, who was the previous owner of the house. She bought the house in 1953 and sadly passed away at 103. She was an amazing portrait painter and actually the kitchen where we are now was where she used to do all of her painting. This was her studio and I managed to find this painting at an auction and I thought there was something really beautiful about bringing something back into the house that would have been here. Something kind of poetic about it. I went through um, quite a long phase of collecting busts. I would describe it as a kind of a compulsion, my addiction to auctions. The next object I'd like to show you is this bust that I found in an auction house in America. She was listed as a 1920s wooden bust from Florence, and that's actually all I know about her. There's something really wonderful about her kind of living here on the windowsill with the light streaming in, and we back onto a very large deconsecrated um, cemetery. It's one of the oldest cemeteries that existed in London from around the 17th century. It's quite quiet around this area because everyone is dead. <laughs> so this is an amazing drawing by Cecil Beaton. It's actually a sketch of Barbara Hutton, the American heiress, and she's wearing the kind of Romanoff jewels. It's also based off of a very famous photo that he took of her as well. What I love about it though is the apology note. To Barbara, with love and apologies, Cecil Tangier. What I'm intrigued to know is what's he apologizing about? Sometimes artworks can kind of lead into collections. Um, a few years ago, I actually based a whole collection around Cecil Beaton called The Age of Silver. This is our bedroom. There's something really nice about the fact that this is just the room that we sleep in. One of my really favorite objects is my coffee alarm clock. The alarm goes off, the water boils, and then kind of comes through here, roll out of bed, move your arm, reach, and have your first coffee of the day, which is great. I definitely don't get eight hours, which I should try to get. The coffee alarm clock helps. Just stay awake. <laughs> Why sleep? This is a collection of Victorian photo albums. I think the Victorians were the ones that really started this idea of the family photo album. Most tend to be kind of from that time. This one's really special. It's also a music box. <laughs> Just a little bit creepy. <laughs> Over here is another object, which is my parents' wedding photo album, which I love. My mother was from Birmingham, England, and my father was from Eastern Turkey. They met in Switzerland and emigrated to Canada. Sadly, they both passed away when, when my sister and I were kind of fairly young. It's nice to keep them kind of close, and it just kind of reminds you of where you're from. This is a suit that I designed from, it's actually from one of my first menswear collections. It's one that I very much love and that I often wear. In kind of creating a menswear collection, there was something so liberating actually in a strange way because so much of that language that you have was something that you could use or not use. I kind of felt like a tremendous sense of um, freedom to it actually. We're just gonna go straight ahead into our bathroom. You get really beautiful light in here. Over here is another one of my favorite objects. There's something wonderful about having a bath and having all of these faces kind of staring at you while you're in the bath, which is a bit funny. Another object I have to mention that's here in the bathroom is the shower that Philip designed. I love this shower and you can see it's very open. There's also something kind of almost kind of slightly institutional about it. It's really wonderful and it's a wonderful thing to enjoy in the mornings. And I also love it because 
Philip made it. I love this room. It's the room that we hang out in, generally where we relax. We have a friend who's come to say hello. This is Pippi. And I definitely don't think she's an object, but she is someone I have a lot of affection for. And she's two years old, and she's a little cockapoo. Mm. Shall we show them the next object? Go on. It's a full set of The Yellow Book, which was a magazine that was published in the 1890s. The artistic editor of the magazine was Aubrey Beardsley, and he designed all of the book covers and illustrated all of them, and he was probably most famous for illustrating all of Oscar Wilde's books. There was a rumor that Oscar Wilde was carrying a copy of The Yellow Book um, when he was arrested. The Yellow Book is named after, literally, yellow books that they used to make um, around that time that were basically kind of erotica. This next object is probably actually one of my favorite objects. It's a painting by Kay Donaghy. The painting's called Glaze of Desire. She explained that it's about catching someone in between kind of a thought and being present and not being present. And there's something so dreamlike about her face. She's kind of somewhere else. We bought this painting on the day that uh, we got engaged, which is really um, special. We both really fell in love with it. Philip and I have similar taste, and then we also have very, very different taste. I quite like a dusty antique store, um, whereas Philip's more architectural in his approach in what he, he loves. But I think there's something really interesting about the contrast about what we both love, and I think this house is very much about that. It's a kind of a contrast between two people, and, um, and you can kind of feel it when you're, when you're in the house. So this is a large photo of a young man by Wolfgang Tillmans. It's actually the first piece of art I ever bought. I think his expression is kind of amazing and it looks like he's been kind of up all night dancing. You can kind of see the perspiration around the t-shirt. There's just something that kind of reminds me of like kind of a rebelliousness and kind of youth that I think is so amazing. And I think also it's such a modern image and the contrast of it in this very old house feels really great. So from the top floor, which is probably maybe one of the, the brightest areas in the house, I'm going to take you now to the darkest area of the house, our basement. Come on, Pips. Here we are in the basement, which is where one of my objects of affection lives, which is just through this door. So this is where the Japanese bath lives. You can maybe tell it's a little bit uh, darker down here. We're in the basement. Philip had this genius idea of lining the walls with um, cork. And you can see here, this is a uh, Japanese ofuru tub, which is um, a very traditional Japanese bathtub made out of hanoki wood, which is a kind of type of cedar wood, which is has a really, really um, beautiful smell. There's something kind of wonderful of, about the fact that you can't actually have soap in here. It's just purely for soaking and the kind of the ritual of, of, of soaking. It's um, definitely probably the most relaxing object of affection that I've shown you today. Thank you, Vogue. I've shown you all of my objects of affection. Uh, but someone needs a walk, so I better go. <laughs>